All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk, the show we cover the swag inside and out. Of course, I'm your tour guide around the swag, C. Wells, coming at you. And we're just going to um, have a little bit of this, a little bit of that little um, random nugget show, nothing really um, in-depth on anything, really. Just going to touch on a few topics, get in, get out, um, as best as I can do. Um, I know I can be a little long-winded at time, but we're going to just get in and get out, talk, talk a little football, a little basketball, little baseball, a little softball, um, and all points in between. Um, I am going to, you know, show baseball and softball a little bit of attention here and there on the show. I'm not going to really devote a lot, a lot of show to it, but I do want to show some attention. So I'll probably cover the, uh, the weekend scores and the standings um, since we are now in Swag Clay. Uh, last weekend was the first full weekend of Swag Clay, so – since we're in swag play, might as well talk about it and, you know, just give a little update on what's going on on, on both ends. So um, with that being said, as usual, you can see the um, the social scrolling on the screen. So make sure to check those out. Um, hit that um, hit that Facebook, hit that Instagram, hit that Twitter, hit um, the email if you need to. Um, all of that is swag talk at uh, swag talk 76 at gmail.com. Is the email swag talk seventy six is the Twitter, uh, swag talk is Instagram and Facebook. So make sure you check those out. I um up, upload on those daily. I guess that's the term. I, I put you know I post on those daily. Um and you can catch you know any updates or any you know whatever that I put up there. And you can always hit me up in my DMs and I'll be glad to chop it up with you. So um with that being said, man, thank y'all for being here. Um if you haven't done so already, won't you please subscribe to the channel. And um, hit that notification bell so you can be alerted to any content that I upload. And then make sure you like the videos, share them, and feel free to comment and let me know what you think about whatever um, topic that's going on. So we're gonna um, we're gonna start off with a little bit of football. Um, we're gonna go ahead and talk about. I don't have a lot of information on actual um, on what actually took place, but. Um, this weekend, uh, Monday, actually was the Jackson State Pro Day. Um, so that um, that's a huge thing. Um, that was a combined um, combined uh, Pro Day with uh, Valley, Alcorn, and uh, Mississippi College, Mill South, Delta State, and Bellhaven. They also had some guys there. Um, 20, uh, 20, uh, 20 teams showed up, so uh, 12 were missing. And that was a thing that Coach Prime talked about, and he went on on his on his social media, and he put those teams out there who did not show up. Um, you know, I you know that's you know whatever those teams you know that they felt they needed to not be there or whatever. Um, hopefully that doesn't you know those teams have some film and everything on some of these guys, and they still do make a good effort to get some of these guys. Um, we are looking to increase the number of players that got that get drafted out of the SWAC and HBCUs as a whole. So a lot of people feel like this season is a season that can get that ball rolling. So um, I guess you can look at that as two, you know, two sides of the coin. Um, do you focus more on, you know, showing appreciation for the teams that were there? Or do you kind of come at the teams that weren't there? Now you can, you can, both sides are accurate and you can, you can, you can handle both sides at the same time. Um, you don't necessarily have to take a side um, just because if you feel like, you know, you're not happy that, you know, certain teams didn't show up, that doesn't mean you can't show appreciation for the teams that did show up and, you know, whatever else. But, you know, that this is, you know, something that hopefully can grow. Um, like I said, this is a, um, this is a, uh, was a joint thing for all the state of Mississippi. So they had 36 players there, which is definitely a good a good look. Um, some of the uh, JSU players that were there were uh, James James Houston. Um, he I don't have any official results or anything, but I did hear that he's up to two forty five, I believe. So that's twenty pounds over his playing weight. So he's putting on some some good weight and getting himself ready for the NFL. Uh, cornerback Al Young, wide receiver Keith Corbin, defensive back CJ Holmes, and linebacker Keontae Hampton. Uh, they all showed. Uh, they all worked out at the pro day. Alcorn also had some guys there. Um, they had uh, quarterback Felix Harper, defensive back Torrance Wilson, running back Stafford Anderson, defensive back uh, Zach Wilson, wide receiver LeCharles Pringle, defensive back Jawan Taylor, 
and they had um Braylon Robinson, who is a standout track guy. So I guess he wanted to come in and kind of get his speed on 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 notice. So um this was a good thing. You know, any any opportunity that you can have to get these guys in front of scouts and other NFL personnel is definitely good. You know, everybody didn't get invited to the HBCU combine. Um, not a lot of guys got invited to the NFL combine, but these are opportunities. So with that, with those with the HBCU combine and hopefully the legacy bowl continuing, and you know, teams emphasizing their pro days now um a bit more than at least at least publicly. Um, I think this will help get guys noticed. Obviously, you know, they these teams pretty much know what you do. Um, through your play on the field on Saturdays, but you know those extra opportunities to work out can can boost a guy. Um, you know some guys can be that workout warrior and get themselves a, a a better a better opportunity because they test well and and they put up good numbers in workouts. So you know I I I, I salute everybody that that was a part of this. You know obviously Coach Prime is a huge uh, factor in this, but you know there's a lot of moving parts in this, and hopefully. People in the NFL will stand up and take notice of what you know guys in the SWAC and HBCU world are doing. Um, there is a lot of talent here, so hopefully, you know these guys can start to get noticed. And um, you know, a, a SWAC guy just got a big bag. Uh, Tarion uh, Armstead, he got a big bag from Miami Dolphins to to lead a Saints. So that's a SWAC guy that you know got drafted and worked his way through. And has been a big time factor on the offensive line, and now he gets a, a bigger bag. So these are opportunities that are ahead of guys that you know. Hopefully, we can have some guys, you know, be the, that type of guy in the future from this draft class and then future draft classes. So, you know, just wanted to kind of touch on that. Like I said, I don't have any numbers or anything on how anybody tested, but you know, I thought this was a good thing. And you know, if one thing we know is if something don't sit right with Coach Prime, he go put it out there. He go say how he feels so. You know, I don't have a problem with him speaking his mind on that. You know, some people, you know, feel like he probably shouldn't have said nothing. But, you know, that, that if it's on his heart, he's going to say it. You know, he's just one of those kind of people. So you, you kind of have to just go with what he what he feels. So I don't think it's going to do any damage. Um, I don't know if he's going to, you know, make anybody show up who who didn't show up before. Maybe those scouts been there and they seen some of those guys that they wanted to see already. We, You know, you just don't know. So, you know, we'll – Cross all those other bridges when we get to them, but that's the Jackson State uh, pro though. As far as from my end, you know, maybe some other information is out there, but um, for what I have, that's that's where I stand. Um, quickly, Southern's pro day is on April sixth at three p.m. So they, uh, I know as far as Southern guys, I see they have um, the Darius Skelton, um, Jatari Carter, Chase Foster, Jacoby Papillon. Um, those are a few of the guys who from Southern who probably will be working out. And um, I'm sure there'll be a few other guys. Um, hopefully, I think maybe Marquise McClain, I'm not sure if he's on that list, but he's a guy who has been really, you know, working out well in the in the springtime. So, you know, any other opportunity for him to get his name out there is definitely a bonus for him. So that's, you know, that's what I have on Southern April 6th, uh, 3 p.m. Is Southern's Pro Day. If anybody has any more information on anybody else's Pro Day, man, please hit me up. You know, I really want to share that with um with everybody and uh, put that information out there a as it comes through because I think, you know, a lot of teams deserve the recognition and hopefully, you know, teams are starting to promote these, 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 um, promote these opportunities. So um, that's pretty much where we stand as far as the football stuff. I wanted to talk a little spring football, but nobody's really sharing any, any information. Um, I've seen some, you know, some a few videos um, from various schools. I've seen a lot of pictures from Gramlin, uh, Alabama, and them had they draft for their spring game, um, which is coming up really soon. Uh, so uh, the spring game is actually on the 26th of March. So they um, they had their spring uh, their spring game their spring game draft. So. That's a you know that's a good a good thing. So that's a fun little opportunity for the players, and um, they you know they can kind of make this thing happen on the spring game. So we um we keep an eye on that. Um, you know, like I said, if I hear any other information that was going on at anybody else uh, school, then I will put report that. Um, I know Southern just went in the pads for the first time this week. Uh, I think they're on their fourth or fifth practice. So um, we we'll, we we'll continue to. 
we'll continue to see how that that goes. As um, I apologize, I lost my video for whatever reason. My camera is, is not working. All right, we back now. Um, sorry about that. Uh, let's jump into a little bit of basketball. Of um, Alabama A and M actually fired their uh, their parted ways with their head coach uh, Dylan Howard. Uh, this is a surprise move to me. Um, he he started. Yeah, I, I think the program was turning around. Um, they they decided to go in a different direction. This move actually came out I think yesterday. Um, they could not agree to terms. Is what the what the statement is. So they're moving forward. And so they are looking for a new head coach. Uh, he was he was brought in prior to the 2018 season. He was at AM four years, going 31 and 76 overall, 23 and 44 in the SWAC. Um, this past season was his best season. Um, he uh, went 10 and 8 in the SWAC, finishing fifth, and um, made it to the conference semifinals. So uh, that was you know I thought this was a, a situation that this team will, will continue to grow. Um, the, um, they went 12 and 18 overall, which was hit the most, the 12, those 12 wins overall was the most at Alabama and them since 2013, 2014. So we'll see, you know, what direction they go. Um, this team hasn't been over 500 since, uh, the 2004, 2005 season when they went 18 and 14. So there's two coaching positions open right now at Alabama and in Alabama state. We'll see, you know, where they go with those, with those moves. Um, both of them are, are, are really good programs as far as basketball goes. Alabama and has been down of Alabama State. You know, they seem like they were starting to come up. I know they were starting to recruit a bit better, but now they, you know, now they're looking for a head coach. So um, we'll see what direction they go with that. Um, like I said, kind of a surprise move, but, you know, if, you, if you're if working on on something that you can't kind of terms, then, you know, obviously you, you, you go, you agree to, part ways and, and, and move on. So hopefully Alabama and them has a good hire lined up. Um, you know, this is, you know, the way the swag is growing in basketball and football. You don't really want to make a change and not and not have a solid replacement in 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 mind. So it's very it's gonna be very important for this team to make the right decision, obviously, and hopefully they do make the right move and they develop um a, a more solid program because Alabama A&M was a, a team that was known for basketball. Honestly, coming into the SWAC, they were known as a basketball school. They went to the NCAA tournament a couple of times. So we'll see, you know, if they can get back to that form. So that's, um, that, like I said, that was kind of a, a, a surprising move to me. Maybe it wasn't to some of you guys, if you more in tune with the A&M program. But I, I thought that program was moving in a, in a better direction. They were returning the bulk of their team. They were only losing two seniors, I believe. So they, um, I thought they had a good opportunity to make some things happen in the future. But still, you never know. Maybe this is just, you know, a bump in the road and they'll be able to get themselves get themselves going. So now that, that leads me to um, something that just, just came through today. And this is a, a, a big thing. Um, Adidas, uh, they announced that they are, um, they are doing a rollout that will give eligible student athletes of all genders the opportunity directly with Adidas to become paid affiliate brand ambassadors. Um, there are uh, HBCUs, obviously, there are, uh, I believe it's five SWAC teams that, that are, are equipped by Adidas, Alabama State, Alcorn, Pine Bluff, Grambling, and Prairie View. Um, they all meet the criteria at Division I schools, uh, HBCUs, along with Power 5 programs, uh, set to start this rollout in the fall. Um, just a couple uh, quotes from uh, Rupert Campbell, who is the president of Adidas North America. He stated, um, at Adidas, we are committed to creating change through sport and recognize the importance, important role student athletes play in shaping the future. Our groundbreaking NIL program advances our commitments toward building inclusivity in sport and inspires athletes to realize a more equitable world. Uh, then he said he can't wait to see this come to life. Um, this is this is a big move, you know. What I mean, obviously there's a lot of parameters that probably, that still need to be worked out, and and uh, any kind of information that needs to be worked out. But this is um this is something that can be a good a good opportunity for all athletes, all student athletes to you know get a, get an opportunity, you know, get a little bit of bread and and you know maybe build their brand for the future, you know. 
this is, you know, a situation where you're working, you know, you're you're kind of in being endorsed by Adidas and and putting putting the brand out there. And if you, you know, go pro, you can probably swing this into an Adidas endorsement. I'm quite sure. Um, I would I, I expect to see other companies start to do this at some point. Um, I don't know, you know, if everybody's gonna jump on board right away. So a lot of most of them will probably sit back and watch and see how this works. But this is a, a positive move for Adidas. Um, if you know, um, Adidas has some special uh, basketball uniforms for uh, the swag schools who wear Adidas. This, this is, uh, I think, like the last couple weeks of the season. You know, that's a good look. They were able to, you know, sell sell replicas of those uniforms. And I think, you know, honestly, I think Adidas might be the top brand as far as working with HBCUs. Um, I don't really get that feeling from Nike or Under Armour. Um, Under Armour has some issues with um, some of their larger schools um, jumping ship. So I don't, I don't really feel like there's a big commitment from Under Armour to to e- either either school in the swag that that you know that wears their their um their brand. Um, probably you know JSU probably is the the best because they are affiliated with Color Prime, who is affiliated with Under Armour. So I'm sure that you know they won't ever get left out of anything. But um, I don't really feel like there's a lot of you know, synergy from the schools and the brands. So hopefully, you know, some things can change. But this is a big, a big deal. Um, like I said, it's still a lot to be put out there. But this is, you know, this is something that's huge, and this covers all sports. So that that doesn't, you know, that that was one of the things that I know a lot of people who maybe were against NIL. Um, that was one of the issues that they had is, you know, how is this gonna affect, you know, the softball players or the tennis players or whoever. Um, so this, you know, this includes everybody and that, that makes it better for everybody. So we'll continue to keep our eyes on this. Um, the more news we get from it, uh, the more the more we'll, we'll put out there. Like I said, this basically just came across today. So there's not a lot of concrete things. But basically, this is only Power Fives and HBCU. So that's that's, you know, that that doesn't get much more inclusive than that. So. This will be this will be a bit a good look, you know. I mean, obviously, the HBCU wave is growing, so let's continue to take advantage of it and, and grow. So, um, this is this is you know this is something that I, I really like, man. I really like this, and hopefully, we can continue to grow this. All right, so let's um let's jump into a little bit of baseball, man. Like I said, we gonna talk baseball here and there on the show, um, but. You know, I know a lot of people don't really like baseball. They, you know, a lot of people feel like it's slow and it's not exciting. But, you know, I, I, I love baseball and I love swag sports. So I wanted to cover it and show it a little li- little bit of love. But, for you know, for those of you who are interested or, you know, maybe you're curious, you know, we'll, 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 we'll run through some scores and some standings and things like that. But before we do that, um, we're going to go ahead and read the predicted order of finish. Um, Jackson State was predicted to win the East Division. Um, they had uh, eight first place votes and 89 points total. Alabama State was picked second, 88 votes, uh, four first place votes. Uh, Florida and them, 67 with two first place votes. Uh, Bethune Cookman, 457. Alabama and them, um, Bill, 55 and four first place votes. Valley, 22 points. Southern uh, is picked to win the West. Uh, with 98 points, 11 first place votes. Alabama, Grambling, excuse me, 80, 80 points with three first place votes. Prairie View, third with 77 points and three first place votes. Texas Southern, 67 points. Palm Bluff, 39. Alcorn, 38 with two first place votes. Oh boy. Uh, let's look at the, let's look at this. Um, we'll look at the scores from this past weekend and um, then we'll look at the standings. Like I said, we're just going to kind of jump in and jump out on this today uh, we, we may go a bit more in depth as the season moves on but i'm probably not gonna be super duper super duper deep into it because i know you know a lot of people don't really get down with baseball like that so i want to you know show show some love but i still want to you know have everybody else feel included so let's look at um let's look at these past weekend scores um big big swack weekend like i said this was the the first um this was the first swag swag weekend of a full swag play. Uh, Friday, Jackson State lost to Bethune Cookman four to nothing. Alabama State defeated Florida and them sixteen to nothing. And Groundland beat Prairie View nine to three. Uh, Saturday games: Bethune Cookman beat Jackson State nine to eight in eleven innings. 
Alabama and them beat Valley six to five. Uh, Southern beat Pine Bluff eleven to six. Uh, Gramlin beat uh, Prairie View ten to one. Um, if you've kept up with Swag Baseball, then you've seen these numbers already. And man, it's rough. Um, Texas Southern beat Alcorn thirty two to tw- thirty two to one um, in game one of their double hitter on Saturday. Um, n- not a lot can be said about that, man. I know, uh, I know, Alcorn has a first year baseball coach, but you know the program is. I guess you know they're they're going through some rebuild. Um, this team got two first place votes, and they have not had a good season at all. Um, they've lost they've lost every game they played so far this season, and none of them have been close. Um, they're moving from the East Division to the West Division, which before I before the inclusion of Famu and Bethune Cookman. I would say the West was always the strongest division in in the SWAC. So now they move to a tougher division. Um, this program is really struggling. Uh, hopefully they could turn it around. You know, what I mean, because you don't want. I mean, you don't want to see a SWAC team get beat this bad by anybody, but you definitely don't want to see um, your team get beat this bad by somebody that's in your conference and in your division. But um, a, a total score of forty-four to two over two games. Um, is just not a good look. You know, I'm not going to pile on those guys, but that's just not a good look. Um, Alabama State defeated Florida and them 7-2. But then when Cookman beat Jackson State on Sunday, 8-7, to seven, picking up a series sweep. Uh, Alabama and them dropped two games to Valley, 8-7 um, to seven, uh, on, in both games. And that gave Valley a series win, 2-1 to one over, over Alabama and them. Uh, Florida, Florida and them lost to Alabama State seven to one. The Hornets get them a, a season sweep of that opening series. Gramlin lost to Prairie View eight to three. Uh, Gramlin won that series two to one. Uh, Pine Bluff took two games from Southern to win that series two to one. They beat Southern twelve to four in game one, and then game um, three they beat Southern seven to three, and then Tech, Tech Southern beat Alcorn in game three eighteen to four. So. Alcorn scored a few more runs, but TSU still put up double digits. So not, you know, just a rough re- weekend for the Braves. Um, just in case you guys aren't really aware of how uh, the schedule goes in Swag Baseball, um, you play uh, every weekend. You pretty much play a, a three-game series against your um, against conference opponents. Pretty much, you play your division. Um, I don't, I don't think they do that much cross division matchups in baseball anymore. But um, you play everybody in your division, uh, home and away, and they're three game series. Uh, usually, you'll play um, some 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 people play a Friday, Saturday, Sunday series. Some people play a double header on Saturday, then a single game on Sunday. Sometimes you get um, a single game on Saturday, a double header on on Sunday. Um, so there's multiple ways, but you do play um, home and away. So right now we are in the early stretch, and we'll run through. Um, We'll run through the, the the schedule for this week as a whole. Um, Jarvis Christian is at Prairie View t- today. Uh, Southern is at Mississippi State. Uh, Tougaloo is at Jackson State, and Gramlin is at Northwestern State. Moving back into swag play, Palm Bluff heads to heads to Houston to take on TSU in a three game series that starts on Friday. Jackson State is at Alabama and M. Valley is at Florida and M. Palm Bluff and TSU play again on. Uh, where they play on – they're showing 5 o'clock uh, first pitch in this game. Uh, Gramlin is at Southern. Friday is the first game of that series. Alabama State is at Bethune-Cookman. Uh, all corners at Prairie View. And then moving on to Saturday, Valley at Florida a and Pine Bluff at TSU. Gramlin at Southern. Jackson State at Alabama a and all Alcorn at Prairie View. Alabama State at Bethune-Cookman. And then Sunday, everybody wraps up their series. Uh, Valley at – at FAMU, Bama State at Bethune, Cookman, Alcorn at Prairie View, Pine Bluff at TSU, Gramlin at Southern, and Jackson State is at Alabama A&M. Um, this, the um, Southern Gramlin game is a is a big is a big deal. Obviously, you know with Southern and Gramlin hook up, um, that's always a big deal. But on Saturday, um, there's a bigger a bigger thing going on. Southern is dedicating their field house to their legendary baseball coach uh, Roger Cador. That ceremony would take place Saturday at 1 p.m. Um, before Saturday's game against Gramlin, which is uh, 3 p.m. first pitch. Um, so the Cador Operations Center was completed in 2015 and was one of Coach Cador's 
pet projects, um, along with the building of Lehigh's Field, which is Southern's baseball stadium. Uh, the groundbreaking for the project came in 2013, and in 2017, the Board of Supervisors uh, voted to name the building um, after Cato. So they finally, you know, are, are, are honoring the best baseball coach at Southern. So um, if you're in the area and you want to turn out, this is a good game to turn out. Uh, Groundland and Southern, whenever they play, obviously they they draw a crowd. So I expect a good a good crowd at this at this game um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So um, if you're in the area, check it out. If you like baseball, um, if you're in any other area, man, please come out and check out some swag sports. Um, everybody, you know, needs that little shine. Um, looking at the uh, conference standings right now, uh, Alabama State and Bethune Cookman are tied at the top of the East Division at three and zero. Alabama State is 11 and 10 overall. Bethune Cookman is 8 and 12. Bethune Cookman had a really close game against the University of Florida on on Tuesday, so they um they've been playing pretty tough. Uh, Valley is two and one right now, six and six, uh, with one draw. Uh, Alabama and them is one and two. They're three and thirteen. Jackson State is zero and three, uh, eleven and nine. FAMU is zero and three, six and sixteen. Texas Southern is the only undefeated team right now in the West Division at three and zero. Uh, they're eleven and eight overall. Grambling and Pine Bluff are two and one. Grambling seven and thirteen. Pine Bluff is five, eleven and one. Prairie View and Southern are tied at one and two. Uh, Southern is four and fifteen all overall. Prairie View is five and thirteen, and Alcorn is zero and three and zero and fourteen overall. So that that's pretty much how we're looking right now in baseball. Um, we're gonna take a look at, at softball as well. Like I said, just want to show this shine to all the swag sports. Like I said, you know that's, that's kind of what I do. So I want to continue to do that. Um, softball is. I'm gonna be real. This is not my thing, but you know, I wanna, I wanna do the best I can, and hopefully, you know, I can, I can learn a little bit too. So, um, let's take a look at the predicted order of finish in in the SWAC. Um, right now, Alabama State is predicted to be the SWAC champs. Uh, they are also predicted to win the East Division. They have 120 points, 11 first place votes. Jackson State second, 94 points, one first place vote. Alabama and them, uh, 85 points, eight first place votes. Uh, Florida and them, 80 points at fourth place, uh, two first place votes. But though Cookman, fifth place, 72 points. Valley, sixth place, 32 points. Uh, TSU is picked to win the West Division, uh, 105 points, 11 first place votes. Alcorn, 99 points, eight first place votes. Purview, 88 points, one first place vote. Grambling, 67 points. Southern, 62 points, two first place votes. And Pine Bluff is um, last uh, projected at 41 points um, right now. So that's our projected order of finishing softball. We'll see how, how that's shaping up. Uh, let's take a look at the scores from this, this past weekend. Um, Alabama State defeated Bethune-Cookman on Friday 3-2. to two. Purview defeated Alcorn 5-1. to one. Texas Southern beat Pine Bluff 3-2. to two. Valley beat uh, FAMU 7-2. And then fam, you beat Valley in game two, five to three on Saturday. Uh Alcorn beat, I mean Purview beat Alcorn 10 to 5. But then Cookman beat Alabama State 8 to nothing in the, the second and final game of their series. Uh all Alcorn beat Purview 8 to 6. TSU beat Palm Bluff 11 0. Uh Southern defeated Gramlin in two games in their doubleheader, 7 to 6 and 3 to 1. Alabama and MB Jackson State in game one, six to five. And Jackson State won game two, six to one. Uh, Fam, you beat Valley five to nothing. Bethune Cookman beat uh, Alabama State six to five. And Texas Southern beat Pine Bluff in the second game of their uh, of that Saturday doubleheader, 10 to two. And then Sunday, Southern beat Gramlin six to one. And Jackson State beat Alabama AM nine to seven. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the upcoming schedule and see where we stand. And then we look at the standings. Oh, uh, you know, like I said, I think I, I think baseball and softball are sports that the SWAC can definitely compete in. I mean, obviously, you know, you still gonna have to take on some heavy hitters, but I think you know these are programs that you can build um, with not a huge amount of resources. So TSU is at Southern on Friday to open up their series. Fam, you was at Alabama and them on Friday, but then Cookman is at Valley. Prairie View is at Arkansas Pine Bluff. Jackson State is at Alabama State. Gramlin is at Alcorn. 
uh, Bethune, Cookman, and Valley play a double header on Friday at 12 o'clock and then at 6 o'clock uh, Saturday. Texas Southern and um, TSU hook up again in Baton Rouge. Uh, fam, you was at Alabama a &M, Jackson State at Alabama State. Bethune, Cookman, and Valley to wrap up their series. I mean, excuse me, to, yeah, to wrap up their series. Um, Jackson State Excuse me, Grambling State is at Alcorn, Jackson State, and Alabama State. Um, they play um, a doubleheader, so they wrap up that series. Uh, Florida and them at Alabama and them to wrap up that series. Prairie View at Pine Bluff and Grambling at Alcorn. And then Sunday, uh, excuse me, then that, that does it for a swag play on the weekend. So um, let's look at the standings and, and see where we stand right now. Jackson State. And Alabama State are atop the SWAC East at four and two, 13 and 11 for Jackson State, 12 and 14 for Alabama State. Valley is three and two, five and 13 overall. Uh, Bethune Cookman, three and three, eight and 18 overall. FAMU, two and four, seven and 19 overall. Alabama and them is one and four, six and 14 overall. Uh, Texas Southern leads the West at six and oh, nine and 11 overall. Southern, five and one, seven and 18 overall. Prairie View, three and three. 3 and 20 overall. Gremlin 2 and 4, 12 and 11 overall. Uh, Alcorn 1 and 5, 8 and 18 overall. And Pine Bluff is 1 and 5 and 2 and 21 overall. So that's going to do it for this show. Like I said, this was just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Touch on a lot of different things. So hope you guys enjoy. As usual, stop this bus, man. Y'all can hop on out. Uh, enjoy your hump day tomorrow. Swag Smoke, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, live as usual. Uh, Sunday, we'll be back with another edition of Swag Talk. And then Wednesday, back again, Hump Day Swag Talk. So we'll be back um, on Thursday with Swag Smoke and then Sunday with Swag Talk. So make sure y'all check that out. And I'll catch you guys on the rebound. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, I have that button popping up um, at this point. It's probably up there now. You can hit that subscribe button. Uh, you can hit the button to watch one of, the, um, one of my previous videos. So make sure y'all check that out. And I will catch y'all on the rebound, man. Peace.